what are the salient findings on this ECG? In addition to sinus tachycardia, ST depression is noted in lateral leads 1 AVL V4 to V6 marked by blue arrows. QS complexes are noted in 3 AVF marked by red arrows. Minimal ST depression is seen in lead 2 marked by violet arrow. Mild ST elevation is seen in AVR marked by black arrow and V1 marked by green arrow. Overall, this ECG fits in with that of an acute coronary syndrome. ST depression is indicative of subendocardial ischemia. ST elevation in AVR has been given certain added significance. Studies have shown ST elevation in an AVR to be associated with left main coronary artery occlusion. Though many of the acute left main occlusions do not reach the hospital due to sudden cardiac death, those who reach the hospital are likely to have ST elevation in AVR. The typical finding of left main stenosis is ST elevation in AVR in V1 with reciprocal ST depression in all other leads. In this ECG, significant ST depression is noted only in lateral leads. ST elevation in AVR and V1 can also occur in proximal left anterior descending coronary artery occlusion proximal to the first diagonal and septal. In that case, ST elevation in V1 will be more than that in AVR while the reverse occurs in left main occlusion. ST elevation in AVR more than or equal to ST elevation in V1 had 81% sensitivity, 80% specificity and 81% accuracy for left main occlusion versus LAD occlusion. But it may be noted that ST elevation in AVR occurred in 8% that is 2 out of 24 cases of right coronary artery occlusions as well. Right coronary artery also perfuses part of the septum through its septal perforator branches. ST elevation in inferior leads was almost invariably associated in RC occlusion as seen in 23 of the 24 cases. No ST elevation in inferior leads was noted in any of the 16 cases of LMC occlusion in this study. The initial references for the topic are here. Remaining references for the topic are these. What are the salient features on the CCG? What is the mechanism? Lead 1 and AVL shows notched QRS complexes suggestive of left bundle branch block. PR interval for the sinus beat is 200 milliseconds at the upper limit. Rhythm strip shows sinus bradycardia with junctional SK beats marked by blue arrow without preceding V waves. They have same QRS morphology as the succeeding sinus beat marked by violet arrow. The sequence of junctional escape followed by a sinus capture beat continues throughout the rhythm strip. This constitutes an escape capture by Gemini. Other common varieties of by Gemini are 1. Ectopic by Gemini 2. Block by Gemini 3. Echo by Gemini Another rare variety of by Gemini is escape echo by Gemini. Ectopic by Gemini sequence can be seen when sinus beat alternates with either a ventricular or supraventricular ectopic beat. Block by Gemini is seen in 3 to 2 sinoatrial or atrioventricular blocks. In echo by Gemini, the second beat is an echo beat. Here is another ECG with bigeminal rhythm. What is the diagnosis? The beats marked as J are junctional escape beats occurring at a slow rate. They are followed by inverted P waves in inferior leads prior to the next QRS complex marked by the blue upward arrows. These beats could be either beats originating from the low atrium that is coronary sinus rhythm or from the high junction. Inverted P waves preceding QRS complexes can be seen in high junctional rhythm as the conduction into the atria are from below upwards away from the positive electrodes of inferior leads. In low junctional rhythm, inverted P waves occur after the QRS complex as the ventricular activation occurs before atrial activation. In mid junctional rhythm, P waves are not visible as there is simultaneous activation of the ventricles and the atria 
and P waves are obscured by the QRS complex. Beads marked as J can be considered as mid-junctional rhythm, but there is a caveat. This bigeminal rhythm appears to be an escape capture by Gemini, but typically the second beat in an escape capture by Gemini is a sinus beat. It appears that here escape capture by Gemini occurs in the setting of a low atrial rhythm. Overall features suggest six sinus syndrome. As the capture beat is not a sinus beat, another possibility is an escape echo by Gemini, a rare type of by Gemini. In escape echo by Gemini, the second beat is an echo beat rather than a sinus beat. The inverted P wave preceding the second QRS could be the retrograde activation of the atrium from the preceding QRS. In that case, the initial QRS becomes a low junctional beat with retrograde P wave occurring after the QRS. This P wave is conducted back into the ventricles producing the next beat which is an echo beat. Then it becomes escape echo by Gemini, a very rare variety of by Gemini. Here is a journal reference on escape echo by Gemini. Discussion on an ECG abnormality due to lead reversal. At one look, it appears like an evolved inferior wall myocardial infarction. But on close scrutiny, the inverted P waves in lead 1 and inferior leads catch your attention. PR interval is 200 milliseconds. Some would think that this could be a rhythm other than sinus rhythm originating from lower left portion of the atrium. In left atrial rhythm, one would expect P inversion in lead 1, V6 and inferior leads. But that will not change the QRS pattern or T waves. Here we have QS complexes in inferior leads with T wave inversion. Downsloping ST with T wave inversion is seen in lead 1. QT interval is 480 milliseconds with RR interval 0.88 seconds. Corrected QT interval calculated by Bessett's formula is 511 milliseconds which is definitely quite prolonged. Hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia and hypocalcemia have to be checked for. One would have expected lower amplitude of T waves in typical hypokalemia. Bessett's formula QTC is equal to observed QT divided by square root of RR interval in seconds. Now coming back to the initial observations what looks like an inferior wall myocardial infarction with a rhythm other than sinus rhythm with abnormal P wave axis can occur when the right arm and left leg leads are reversed while recording the ECG. Simplest way to check for lead errors is to take a repeat ECG under direct observation and compare the tracings. In this case, inferior wall infarction pattern and abnormal P wave axis reverted in the repeat ECG. Sometimes one may have a doubt whether it is a transient supraventricular rhythm abnormality. But then QRS abnormality is reverting back to normal rules out that possibility. Lead reversals are one of the common technical errors during ECG recording. Common as being right arm left arm lead reversal. Right arm left arm lead reversal is often called technical dextrocardia as standard leads recorded in that situation resembles that in dextrocardia. Chest leads will not be altered in that case and clinches the technical error. Returning to the current ECG, the technical error will not explain the prolongation of QT interval for which usual causes will have to be sought and found. Most of the modern electrocardiographs with analytic programs built in usually recognize right arm left arm lead reversal and give a warning note. Some mention that their interpretation given is presuming a normal lead placement. Other lead reversals are difficult to diagnose both for the algorithm and for the interpreting physician. Artificial neural networks have been used for recognition of electrocardiographic lead reversals. 11,009 ECGs recorded using computerized electrocardiographs in an emergency department were used for the study. Right arm left arm lead reversals were then computationally created for each ECG. Neural networks were then trained to detect ECG with right arm left arm lead reversal. The neural networks performed better than rule based criteria regardless of whether P waves were present or absent. 
neural networks had a sensitivity of 99.1% when P waves are present and 94.5% when P waves are absent. Corresponding sensitivities for the best criteria were 93.9% and 39.3% respectively. Both neural networks and role-based criteria had very high specificity of 99.87% to 100%. It is mentioned that neural networks along with an algorithm for detection of right arm right foot lead reversal would recognize about three-fourths of lead reversals seen in clinical practice. These technologies should be used as a guide to alert us to frequently overlooked lead attachment errors for avoiding errors in electrocardiographic diagnosis. Here are the first set of references. Second set of references are here. ECG quiz on a wide QRS rhythm. Here is an ECG showing a wide QRS rhythm. What are the findings and interpretations? P waves can be seen at a rate double that of QRS complexes marked by blue arrows in the rhythm strip. They are inverted in inferior leads indicating an ectopic focus from the low atrium. This would suggest an ectopic atrial tachycardia. 2 is to 1 conduction excludes the possibility of an AV node mediated tachycardia which would get terminated with the onset of AV conduction block. The QRS is very wide 200 milliseconds with a tall slurred R prime wave in V1 and a slurred S wave in leads 1 and AVL. These indicate a complete right bundle branch block. QRS has right axis deviation suggestive of left posterior hemi block in addition. Fragmented QRS is visible in inferior leads as multiple notches in the QRS complex. All these indicate a high risk for ventricular arrhythmias. Such wide QRS is often noted in post-operative cases of tetralogy of fallow. It is well known that adults with previously operated tetralogy of fallow can develop ventricular tachyarrhythmias and die suddenly. They are prone for ventricular tachycardia as well as atrial tachyarrhythmias like atrial flutter and fibrillation. Syncope may be a forerunner of sudden death in some individuals with operated tetralogy of fallow and calls for evaluation. An annual incidence of 0.4% sudden death during the first 25 years after surgery has been reported. Both the surgical scar as well as the dilatation of the right ventricle and right atrium due to the pulmonary and tricuspid regurgitation are thought to have roles in arrhythmogenesis. Highest risk is in those with marked cardiomegaly, cardiothoracic ratio more than 60%, severe pulmonary and or tricuspid regurgitation, QRS duration on electrocardiogram of more than 180 milliseconds and a QT interval dispersion of more than 60 milliseconds. In the ECG illustrated here, the QRS duration is 200 milliseconds and comes in the high risk category. Surgical correction of pulmonary regurgitation with a valvular processes and tricuspid regurgitation by anloplasty may decrease the chance of atrial and ventricular arrhythmias. This is more likely if surgical repair is also accompanied by mapping and ablation of the re-entry circuit of arrhythmia. Here are the first set of relevant journal references. One more journal reference is here.